In this video, we're gonna be discussing JavaScript objects and we're gonna be solving a follower's problem. They DM'd me this. I thought this would be a great way to discuss how to utilize objects. Here are some explanations, some examples, real life and otherwise, so that way you can walk away feeling like you got some true value for your time and that you now truly understand the concepts that we're discussing. Let's explain this and then write some code. So what's a JavaScript object? An object is a collection of data or key value pairs, which consist of variables, functions, etc., that you could basically access through dot notation. Now, that probably is just like a bunch of words. It doesn't necessarily make sense or mean anything. So let's break down this relationship of what a key value is, and then we'll start writing some code so that way we can at least understand the concept that we're learning and start adding to it. So essentially the idea that we have here is we have our object and we have a key, and then we have our value, each one being represented by a key and then being followed up with the values within that key. Now you're probably still kind of vague on this, so let's write a couple of examples so that way this makes sense. Let's go ahead and use something simple, something that we're all familiar with and possibly even a business use case so that way we can apply this to real world situations. Let's talk about phones. Drop a like on this video. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. So let's say we have a cell phone store and we have multiple brands in the store and we want to keep track of how many quantities of each brand that we have. An object would be a great use case for this. So let's go ahead and start writing this out. So we'll name our object phone since we're talking about phones here and let's be very specific in the naming. We're not using random variables like X and Y. I want these variables to mean something so when we start calling them it makes sense. So now let's talk about the brands. We have several brands in our store. We have Samsung, we have Apple, we have Google. Since we're discussing objects we can use different types of variables in here. It doesn't necessarily have to be just a string or an integer. We can use arrays even to have our different range of values or multiple values that we can tap into. So in this use case, we're using an array with three strings inside, Samsung, Apple, and Google. And now we're using a different array to represent the quantities of each brand. And in those quantities, we have the integers one, two, and three, or the numbers one, two, and three. Now I want to know how many Google phones I have in stock. Great way to utilize this would be a function. So now we're creating a function inside the object and inside of that we're creating an alert which is a pop-up box, an alert box and we're string concatenating meaning we're adding values to the string that we have and we're using there are space, this dot quantity and the array position of that quantity number that we specifically want in this use case and then we're using this dot brand to get the brand and the array position for that brand name phones available. So in this situation, we should theoretically see there are quantity one, as we know in programming, we start counting at zero. So zero, two phones and of the brand Google and those phones are available. So how can we see this now? Because if we save this right now, we're not going to see anything. But what could we do to see this? And to showcase this, let's go ahead and go to our index.html page. And if you've never utilized this before, there's a great extension you can utilize called Live Server. You just go to the extension store here, type in Live Server, it got a purple icon, and you can use this to use a tool like this, like open with Live Server. And when you do that, it will bring a brand new window in your browser, and you can go ahead and see what you have. Now, obviously we have nothing being shown here right now. So how can we show this object? How can we show this function of what we wanna see here? We can now use our dot notation, which means we're calling the object phone, dot, using the dot, and then notating or writing out the function name that we want to call here. So how many Google phones? And then that. Now, if we just wanted to call out, let's say, you know, the brand name, we could use something completely different as well, which we'll get into in a moment. And now if we were to save this, we see that there is an alert box or a pop-up box that says there are two Google phones available. Right? And if I pressed OK and refreshed again, it would keep popping up. Every single time I refresh this page, it would pop up. Right. Now it's given the same number and same brand because we set static values here. But if we were to change this up, let's say we don't want to use an array anymore, right? And we wanted to go ahead and just set a specific value. So this time we're using the number eight. And then I would come here and remove this array position and I would save that. And now it says there are eight Google phones available. Now, if I were to come back here and change this to let's say position uh, number zero, there are eight Samsung phones available. Now, as we see on the screen here, they have their HTML and obviously the reason why I'm going through this entire explanation, it also seems like they're lacking a lot of fundamentals when it comes towards naming conventions and things like that. For example, index.html1.html, that's obviously an issue. But also I'd really wanna highlight other aspects like for example, we have our script at the bottom and we have our function, but we haven't listed any single way that we can kind of even even showcase this. They were saying in their situation, they were expecting to see the name Jack Smith. So I'll go ahead and comment all this out since we don't require this anymore. So let's go ahead and start with the name const employee. Looks like we're setting up an object for data of employees. 
And here we have the first name. Instead of using theirs, I don't want to code the exact same thing. We'll customize this a little bit. So we're going to name this John and last name being Doe, full name being the function. Inside this, we're returning this dot first name. We're returning a space. So we're concatenating that and then returning the last name, right? And then we obviously need to call this function. So we're using employee.fullName, expecting to see John Doe. Right now, we've kind of coded this out to where we are returning the value, but we're missing one big key feature here. We're not utilizing the value. We're not implementing it anywhere. We need to make sure that we're placing it somewhere so that way it can be displayed in the HTML. How do we go about doing that? So we're saving that and now let's go to the HTML part and what we can do now here, we can use a P tag and a hashtag symbol and we can press tab and now it gives us a P tag with an ID. And so let's get the element by ID. And now we're gonna get this element by ID. So let's go ahead and save that. And we come back back here. Now we have document dot get element by ID. We have employee full name, which is the name of the ID that we're attaching ourselves to. And then we're using inner.html so that way we can give that text there. And we're passing in the function employee.fullName from our object of employee. So now if I'm gonna save this and go back to our window, the whole alert box is gone since we commented out and our employee name of John Doe is there. Hopefully this gives you some better context on how to utilize a JavaScript object and to also display that information in the front end, but also understand naming conventions. We don't want to name things like index.html1.html. We just want to use our file name and then the .html, the .js. Keep it simple, keep it easy because you don't want to create bugs by adding extra context in areas that you normally wouldn't see it in. Follow the normal convention standards. Now, traditionally, your first page of a website is always named the index page. You can name it whatever you want, but following that pattern can kind of make it easy for you to understand things. Same thing with the app.js. Your first file will be an app.js file. Every single thing after that, you can kind of name whatever you want. It doesn't have to be named app.js. You can name it anything that you want, but following those normal conventions really help you out. Hopefully you got a ton of value out of this. If you like this, let me know. Please let me know. What are some use cases that you could think about using JavaScript objects for? Also, let me know what other tutorials you'd like to see. I'd love to make a lot more technical content to help you out in your learning journey. And as always, please remember this. You absolutely got this.